All right, tonight I have a scene showing the finished shadows with some mopeds. And as you can see over here, we have the shadow casting on one of the mopeds and everything's fully interactive with the shadows. Again, ignore the surroundings. It's horrible programmer art again. And as we see, I've outdone myself with my horrible choices. But anyways, the mopeds are what we're interested in. So as I move around, you can see the shadows casting perfectly on the vehicles. And that gives the scene a better sense of depth. And of course, it's more realistic. So if I select, for example, this motorcycle and decide to rotate it, the shadows will update dynamically as I turn the vehicle. Which is the whole purpose of the shadows. I wanted them to be perfectly interactive and to automatically update as I move objects in the scene. And also the shadows are fairly sharp, which is another objective that I wanted. I changed some things since the last time. Um, instead of having four cascades for the shadow maps, I went down to three. That's acceptable for this type of game. Also, I had a 32 bit uh, depth buffer that I was keeping for the shadows and that was used for when I had the spherical cascade selection. I've since disabled that and gone back to a traditional parallel split cascade selection and so I'm now back to using the 16-bit render target for the depth buffer that I use for the deferred lighting. I use the 32-bit just for the shadows because I needed more accuracy for the spherical cascade selection video that I showed earlier. But now since that I've removed that, there's no need for me to have that second depth buffer. So I save some GPU processing power by not having that second depth buffer. And of course, I save some video memory. So needless to say, everything's working pretty good. If I unselect And of course, if I translate, the shadows will also update, as you can see. So that'll give you an extra sense of realism in the game as objects come in and out of shadows. And it also ground everything in the scene and give it that uh, more realistic feeling. For instance, all the geometry casts on other geometry. So if I move this, let me see. Yeah, I'll move it that way. Hopefully we can see. I'll move it a little bit more. Yeah, right there. So as you can see, shadows are being cast by all the geometry in the motorcycle. So these little upraised up foot pads also cast shadows on the scene. And everything's using PCF filtering, which is done by the video card as I showed in an earlier demo. So I allow the hardware to do that for me. Whereas before I was doing that myself in the shader until I discovered that the video card could do it. So that's what I've been working on so far. It's pretty much reached a pretty refined point with the shadows. So for now, I'll leave them alone, but I'll keep refining them as the game goes along. And I think the next thing to do is I'm tired of this horrible programmer art. For, so it's time to actually start getting some real artwork for the game. So hopefully the next video, I'll have some finished artwork that I can show, possibly some concept art. Or even better would be a 3D model. So I'll keep everyone posted. Thanks and bye.